This video is a segment from the Location Tech Industry Working Group meeting for October 10th, 2012. The speaker is Alex Barth, and he's telling us about Mapbox and their work on OpenStreetMap. Switching to my screen here, what you can see is uh, are the Mapbox uh, front page here that I wanted to start with. Again, um, we're on the phone here to talk about Mapbox and OpenStreetMap. Um, we have uh, we have just recently gotten the night grant that I mentioned before, $500, uh, $575,000 in grants for Mapbox slash development seed uh, for improvements in, op in OpenStreetMap infrastructure. Uh, I would like to talk really quick about what we do here at Mapbox uh, and about our tools and then quickly get into what our vision is here for uh, improvements in OpenStreetMap. Um, let me, let me just start here with, uh, with our front, front page here. This is the Mapbox.com front page. We've been around for like about nine years. If I count like our host or like founding company development seed, uh, the way how we got into mapping is with projects like this one, we wanted to create very fast, very compelling uh, data visualizations. Like here, what we see here is the US Census 2010 uh, visualization comparing the 2010 census to, to, to the 2000 results. Um, what we saw when we started building websites like this one, that like the uh, the technology that we would find in, especially like in, well across the board, but uh, also in the open source space where where we feel at home, uh, was just really not up to snuff, and we could not build the sort of like fast and interactive experiences that we wanted to build. So we started to scrape together a couple of tools uh, that would allow us to create like these tile-based fast map experiences. Another example of such a, such a data visualization that we, we do here on the consulting side would be like the Horn of Africa map uh, where we sh where we really show like uh, in a step-by-step -step walkthrough uh, how the, um, uh, the famine on the Horn of, on the Horn of Africa uh, developed. That's a site that we launched in uh, last year around like the UN um, summit in, uh, in, in New York City. So uh, while we were, as we were starting, like to cobble together a couple of open source tools, we saw that this space is like much more interesting than just like having our little toolbox on the side, but actually something that we can share in a much more structured way. So we launched Timo, and uh, some of you may be uh, familiar with Timo. Uh, <clears throat> Timo is an open source uh, map design studio. This is uh, a tool that would come in once you have like processed your geodata, for instance, with Quantum GIS or, or with ArcGIS. Uh, uh, or, or in your PostGIS database, and now you'd like to uh, style the data in, and, and, and you'd like to get it online in a, uh, in a really like uh, with a very like large degree of design control, and, and also like then ultimately you want those uh, maps to be hosted fast. So, Telm is a tool to help that help you that it is a open source design studio for designing your maps, and uh, it, it also renders those maps in tile into tiles, hence, hence the name Telm. This is one of the core tools that we provide as Mapbox. Uh, it is also uh, the tool that we use for uh, creating a uh, map based on OpenStreetMap data, and I will, I will talk about that uh, in, in a minute. Um, one of the other tools that we're creating here at Mapbox um, is, is Mapbox JS based on uh, modest maps with a lot of extras, uh, a like lightweight JavaScript library for embedding maps on, on, on Websites. You also have like libraries for uh, embedding your maps uh, and, and building map-based applications uh, for iOS. And we provide a couple of other like tools, sort of in, in, in that sort of like map publishing uh, space, uh, with like the target being like the web and uh, and mobile devices. Uh, now, now to OpenStreetMap. Uh, as I said before, uh, we use OpenStreetMap data for uh, uh, one of our our, our main maps. Uh, the map being like Mapbox streets. You can see when you compare here like uh, uh, the southern tip here of Manhattan, uh, this would be like the southern tip of Manhattan in OpenStreetMap. And here we would have like the same rendering on uh, Mapbox streets. We create this map, as I said before, with Talmo. Um, and uh, it cost us a little, uh, it cost us actually like a, a a pretty good level of effort to get to the point to be able to render the world. You can imagine that uh, this is a pretty large undertaking. Uh, the, the world down to the Zoom level 17, if you want to pre-render it, has some somewhere in the order of a 
is somewhere on the order of a terabyte of data. It takes an immensely long time. Uh, we're using Amazon uh, Web Services for uh, hosting our maps. Uh, just like the puts for all the tiles that are involved in the world are without any tuning would cost you $7,000. So we're like a small company bootstrapping here. We're about 25 people right now. So like there are certainly real challenges in like, you know, climbing like the scale curve here as we are, uh, as we are uh, uh, bootstrapping our business here. Um, we'll talk about our, uh, our business model in a, in a little bit in a bit. Um, as we launched Mapbox Streets, uh, one of our first clients was uh, Foursquare. That was uh, in March uh, of, of this year. Foursquare uh, uses our maps now uh, on the web interface. They are planning to use those <coughs> soon also on their mobile devices. Um, and you can see here the striking similarity. <laughs> um, and uh, this has been for us a very good experience to have the map out there in a in, in, in such an incredibly like uh, social space like Foursquare, four it has really allowed us to improve OpenStreetMap, uh, uh, especially on the data level. Uh, what's really interesting about clients like Foursquare is that the, their space is inherently social, so uh, some of their like more involved users will start reporting problems on the map, and this is in turn information that we can use for improving the map. Uh, we've done uh, great things here with uh, um, Partly like, you know, what they call open street map armchair mapping, like satellite tracing imagery for remote cities and then working with local communities to like uh, enrich the map. Uh, it's really rewarding for us to like be able to uh, uh, invest more time in, 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 a, in, in, uh, in a project like open street map with uh, incredible, an incredible, incredible uh, growth rate. I'm just like pulling up a couple of like, quick graphs here. Uh, this is the OpenStreetMap coverage uh, that we have uh, in Europe. Um, this would be like coverage in the U.S. You see, it's very, very good in these places, but still, like also like in more remote places like uh, Brazil uh, or like more like you know up and coming places like Brazil or India, um, Japan. Like the data is, uh, is 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 pretty incredible. There's a couple of examples in here. Um, Mm, worthwhile mentioning here also Sarajevo, which is essentially not exist on the, on the Google Maps. Uh, the community is growing like really, really fast, and this is really one of the reasons why we want to uh, like start uh, invest more aggressively in OpenStreetMap uh, because if you um, if you have ever worked with OpenStreetMap, you're keenly aware that there's a certain learning curve involved, and when you look at the total users here, like those are 750,000 users that have an account right now on OpenStreetMap. Only a small part of them has actually ever created uh, a, uh, a single piece of data on OpenStreetMap.org. And a much smaller part, about like 24,000 users, are actually like very active mappers. It is still a very large degree. Uh, this is still a very large number. It's pretty incredible still that they managed to uh, create such a, such a tremendous worldwide coverage but there's clearly there are like uh, there's like a lot of improve, room for improvement for uh, bringing people up the learning curve and for improving like um, <clears throat> the productivity of folks and uh, frankly also like the quality of data that they produce. Uh, if you've ever worked with OpenStreetMap, you're familiar. You've you've seen that uh, you know uh, you're using editors like this one. This is Jasm here. I'm not sure if I'm switching here. This is probably I have to probably switch. Yeah, we're using like uh, editors like Jawsm where you download data like here. Um, this would be a part of, uh, uh, of Washington DC right around the corner where our office is right here. Uh, and you would use like probably satellite imagery for like getting additional context or for probably tracing new, uh, uh, new objects. And uh, you would use like a tagging system like the one over here for actually modifying the data. This is a very powerful editor, and actually I, I, like a, I really like Jawsm, like the, the, the editor that I'm, that I'm demoing here. But this is one of the things that uh, really present like a hurdle for, for getting started as a contributor on OpenStreetMap. Switching back here to my other screen again. Now, um, Meantime, we have clients on like uh, USA Today and more. 
really what's happening is that we, and this goes back to our business model, is uh, we uh, make money by uh, selling map views. Um, a lot of our clients are really just using like MapOx streets, the open street map based uh, map of the world. Uh, but many of them actually create their own maps and upload them, you know, they're using tile model, create their own map, upload it, and then serve it from there. This is our pricing model. You can imagine that larger clients like, <coughs> like uh, uh, USA Today or Foursquare are like having like, their, own, uh, their own plans because they're way beyond like our largest plan, but you, you get the idea. Uh, you get the idea that uh, you just like uh, sign up here and, and, and start running. Um, creating a map is really simple. I want to show you that as well, like real quick here, because it adds a little bit more context. This would be like creating a new map on my account. Uh, I could do here things very quickly, like uh, change like the the colors of this map. Tweak it, for instance. Maybe I don't like the watercolor that we're using here, so I'll. Tweak that. Um, I'm not a very good designer, so I'm just going to switch back to like the to the standard. I can like turn on here like um, hill shades, the terrain layer, um, etc. Right? I just saved that map, and when I'm done, I can share this map just like a YouTube video. Or if we want to do like more intricate um, Interactions I would use um, again like Mapbox.js for embedding the map and for doing like more interesting stuff like flying around on the map, uh, placing placing markers, etc. So you get here like the, the picture of like that we're trying to um, <coughs> create sort of a, a a very you know much more customizable uh, and a much more much more beautiful alternative to some of like the existing mapping solutions out there. Uh, with like a very high degree of <coughs> design control and, uh, uh, and and a couple of like new and interesting ways of how uh, you can actually uh, start to work with these with these maps. Um, lastly, here uh, we have <coughs> we've applied, we have applied to uh, the Knight Foundation here with a grant for improving OpenStreetMap. I mentioned this initially. Um, our goal here with this grant is to improve OpenStreetMap uh, uh, on the levels of uh, editing experience, uh, on the level of uh, better social interaction on OpenStreetMap.org, and on uh, making it easier to get data out. And now this is where we should start. This probably turned us a little bit more into a conversation. Really, our goals here are, if you have read like this blog post here that uh, we used for the announcement of the grant, we, we state these goals like in, in rather broad strokes. And uh, our goals here are, remain rather broad. We have not started yet like a closer conversation here with, or the closer work here with the community, where uh, like some of these goals will be like fleshed out in, in more detail. But our uh, philosophy and our principles are going to be to be like as open as possible in this process and to like uh, completely develop the tools that we are that we are um, that we would like to uh, see here uh, deployed on OpenStreetMap.org in the open and um, and uh, we will make sure that they're all uh, open source and completely open openly licensed, uh, all in an effort to. Uh, Make it like as easy as possible to participate in this process and uh, to make uh, the tools that we create here as sustainable as possible uh, for for the wider community. Uh, we will uh, post this week uh, a uh, first blog post uh, where we'll make uh, some of these goals more concrete and like uh, cash out like a little bit more concrete uh, backlog. And actually, as I'm speaking here. Over in the other room, Tom is sitting and he's like uh, hammering out like a first go on a backlog for the API. Uh, this is where we'd like to start. Uh, really, like uh, the vision here, especially like in the editor space, is uh, to not just come up with like you know here's the new editor monolithic uh, piece of of software, but we would like to uh, really improve like the ability to create uh, task focused focused editors. Uh, this is a long-standing feature request in the community. Uh, like people would like to see like more. Uh, focused editors, for instance, editors that are only here for tracing, or editors that you that you'd only use for, like for entering points of interest, or editors that you would only use for entering street street names. Now, 
it is, <coughs> what is happening to a certain degree, like if you look at sites like the, the, uh, the very popular like wheel map, this site has a, a task focus uh, editor built in that uh, allows you to uh, classify points of interest uh, by their wheel map, uh, by their wheelchair accessibility. But we know it is still very hard for creating those editors. You essentially have to start almost from scratch with every, every single one of them. So we'd like to like, uh, improve like, the ecosystem here in terms of what tools are available for, um, for creating such editors. Uh, this will have to do also with like uh, making it easier to like uh, extract OpenStreetMap data, and um, lastly, like here for uh, the social experience, we're talking a lot about the website and the sort of uh, uh, interaction that we have today with other mappers that is uh, very coarse to say the least. For instance, like here in our in my activity stream, I only see like. My friends, while my friends, quote unquote, while it's it's actually really hard to see what has happened on the map in the meantime, which could be like a lot more interesting for me as a mapper here to improve the map, right? Also, it's like very sort of single location based, where I may be interested in more locations in the world. Um, this is it's about it's about like a sort of uh, improving uh, these sort of interaction points between mappers to make them to make them more productive. And to make it easier for them to just sort of like find the 